So you've got until November now, right? Before you play this again. So my suggestion would be to slow it down, okay? Um, I know from my experience performing as soloist with orchestra that it always on stage with the orchestra feels slower to me than what I have practiced. Slower practice um, is gonna really help solve a lot of things for you. I mean, what I really love that I hear coming through so well is the contradiction between the technical stuff and the lyrical. So that is, is fantastic. What I am not hearing enough of, which is really important, especially when you're playing with orchestra, is the projection of your sound, okay? Um, and you know maybe some of that is due to nerves, but you're gonna be nervous. I mean, I'm always nervous when I perform. You know, no matter how well I know something, like I'm always, I'm always nervous, and things don't go exactly how you practice them. They might come really close, but they're always, they just, they just always feel a little bit different. Um, so let's go back to the start of this, and then I actually want you to do the technical parts lyrically. And I want you to focus on tone and sound production and where all of this, these finger technical things, like what is the melodic line underneath that? And how would you bring that out if this were really slow? So I want you to do it really slow. And I just, I want you to just like pretend that this opening is a slow lyrical melody. So I don't know if you have ever practiced it like that, but it, yeah, good, all right. But like, yeah, so just, just pretend that this is like a slow movement of a piece and not this like, da -da -da -da, like crazy technical thing. Mm. Okay, from the beginning? Mm-hmm. With the same dynamics, you know, as you're gonna be playing. changing your embouchure, which um, you can do some of that when you're playing slowly and have you know more success than like when you have to do something really fast. Mm -hmm. um, so I think if you can be more stable, because I think the faster that we have to play, um, especially when we're jumping around a lot, like you don't want to be moving a ton. There's like really minimal movements that have to happen here. Mm -hmm. So I think if you can just kind of find like a really great that big sound and then stay there with minimal like changes for like as it like jumps all around so just try to get as much resonance as you can yeah so now that's great you're being a little fussy with it like do you do you guys hear that she's coming in and out of her sound like a little bit so just be like more steady with your airstream, like a more consistent speed, okay? You have time to make these nice color changes when you're playing the slower stuff, but here, like, you, you don't have time to do all that, so. you're getting into the low register. Good. Try doing this without vibrato. Yeah, and as you get to the end of the phrase, maybe a little bit more volume too, because you're gonna have chance coming up to give a change of care, okay? So go like, think that you're going all the way until that high G with the intent of your air. The intent and the speed of your air and the phrasing in your sound. Now let's try that again. So that lower F needs to really be in focus. Try it slightly faster. 
here, still lyrically, okay? You're, you're lightening up your sounds a little bit, so maybe a little bit more consistent pressure with your airstream so that you don't get a little bit too light. Because you gotta think we're gonna we have to project all the way out there and over this big orchestra, right? So now dig in. So now let's try it articulated, okay? But the same idea behind that. Same tempo. Same tempo. Keep that intensity going because the more that you can keep the intensity here, the more like effect that change to the lyrical will have. Good. Now try it a little faster and a little bit more with like the type of articulation that you're going to be playing this one. Yeah. Have you ever tried this with a ha? Articulation, no. like just a breath articulation. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. yeah, can you do that for me? Yeah, now try adding the tongue to that so that there's just like a little bit of separation. Just a tiny bit. underneath the sound you won't really be, have time to be doing that but just the idea that you're supporting more so that you can give more projection yeah that's pretty fast that's, that's good that's more sound to me oh it's dramatic yeah. that's like a big difference yeah. right yeah. yeah so and the clarity was there too okay <laughs> So these are just like some ways that you know you can you can practice this. I think I think for you in all of this technical stuff, just keeping the intensity going, not letting the register jumps mm -hmm. interfere with like just the steady stream of air. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, like, and I, that's most of this movement, really. I mean, that was. That was my biggest issue is that just, you know, your, your fingers are moving so fast, you're, you're going to be surprised when you go to rehearse the orchestra at how slow it feels. So, you know, yeah. there's an old saying, if you can't slow. do it slow, you can't do it fast. And you have so many months now mm -hmm. to really take advantage of just slowing this down and just getting your sound exactly as you want it on every single note with the intent behind it. So I would think, like, the lyricism of the phrasing through the separated notes through the articulated notes so that you know you're not just because something i mean we can produce notes pretty easily just by tonguing them but they're not necessarily in focus they're not necessarily with the right intensity and a lot of that is revealed when you slur something when you play it legato like you all of a sudden can tell like where you're blowing less speed and blowing more speed on like different notes and so there's this unevenness that reveals itself when you when you go to play it so i would do a lot of that i would actually really like to hear just some of the second movement if that's okay because the so many the first one there's like so much the same like kind of issue Maybe just, just, the just the first, first the like all the way until, okay. until, so like the first like, until the first like rest. Yeah. <laughs>
opening of this is so internal that the way that you're playing it, you're already giving so much. And I think if you can switch your train of thought to instead of like you're giving it right away, that you're inviting the audience to come hear you. Um, so I think if you can start and just, just be more still, like play that first B, but like really hear it and really listen to it before going on to your second note. Um, really just it's really just B it keeps going back to B right so there's like but I think you should play it just on B and think the other notes but just keep everything on B okay. does it make sense so, so focus on how you're moving your airstream mm -hmm. and how that B is changing over the course of that phrase. So just play B throughout? Yes, okay. just play only on B. But like imagine, like hear the other notes, oh. but just don't actually physically switch to them. Okay, so something before you even do that, in your breath, I don't think you need a big like obvious breath. You have all this time to prepare, right? So I think you should be ready to go, but your breath can be something. Your breath before you play something should reflect and be in the same character as what you were about to do. So if you take this big, and part of it is this is the way you were playing it initially too, was just, you know, so you don't, you don't really need to prepare for anything. I think just be ready. Maybe let a little bit of air escape from your nose first so that your airstream is already flowing. But I don't think you need to show anything. I think it can be like everything just more calm and subtle and so that we don't know when you're gonna play really. But it should it should speak right away. You didn't imply like, <laughs> this thing. I mean it's slow, right? So you have time to take a nice long slow breath. to be like, I mean, you don't want them to struggle to hear it, play. like it has to project, but you, you just wanna, you want them to be interested in listening. Or even more still. Okay, try it again. Give you a clear start. So when we are playing really soft, we need so much more support than when we're playing loud. You know, so you have to, you gotta work really hard to play soft. out a little bit 
See if you can make that really smooth. So. So you hear it getting louder. Mm -hmm. See if you can lead to that F without it being a dynamic. time you go to a note the start of the note sticks out just a little bit like we hear the change in note so the idea of having these changes be as seamless and imperceptible but precise as possible mm -hmm. um, I think it's the same thing we were talking about you know with keeping your airstream moving I think at the tail ends of the note right before you're getting ready to switch notes you're letting up on your airspeed or pressure or a little bit of both. You know, so really concentrate just before you change to the next note. Make sure you're still blowing. From here? Yeah, from the head. Emphasize that D flat, just F to D flat, nice and smooth. Now maybe you can be a little, I love the quality that you have mm -hmm. for the D flat. To me, it's just a little bit too much volume, too soon in the piece, mm -hmm. because we have so long to go before it really develops. sound though that the note like was no longer a quarter note right so you have to keep it you have to keep it going for it longer than you think okay You know, it's like you're crescendoing each note, but at the same time you're diminuending. So it's like this constant like, right? So you just keep it all consistent. Keep the crescendo consistent. Okay, yeah, from here.